So let us uh, quickly recall noise normalization. Uh, let R be a finitely generated k algebra. Then there exists uh, variables uh, algebraically independent elements. Z1 up to ZR and R such that K Z1 up to ZR injects into R and R is a finitely generated. So, let us call this S, S module. So, uh, I mean we proved this uh, when the field k is infinite. Uh, I am not going to repeat the proof, uh, but I will uh, quickly go through the steps. So, here what we did was we proved this uh, by induction on n, but what is n? I am looking at So, when I write this k x 1 up to x n, I mean R is a k algebra generated by x 1 up to x n. These need not be variables. If you are, if you have confusion, uh, yeah, okay. I will just simply write like this. See, for example, we discussed this uh, uh, or you know over k. So, if I look at this uh, k algebra x 1 x 2 minus 1. So, this I can write as k algebra generated by x 1 bar x 2 bar right. Now, this is see x 1 bar as it is is algebraically independent over k because it does not satisfy any equation over k. Okay. But now, if I look at this one, x 2 satisfies an algebraic equation over k x 1, which is x 1 x 2 minus 1. So, so if I look at this x 1 bar t minus 1, this is a polynomial. No. So, this is not integral. Okay this x 2 satisfies a polynomial, but does not satisfy an integral equation. Uh, the extension being integral, one big advantage of extension being, being integral is that the dimensions are same. Yeah, it will be finite first of all. Secondly, it will the dimension of A. So, if I have an integral extension A contained in B, so, we defined the scroll dimension right, uh, maximal length of uh, chain of prime ideals right. So, if this is integral then scroll dimension of A is same as scroll dimension of B. Okay. So, in this case x 2 is not integral over this ring but it is it satisfies an algebraic equation. So, I am when I write r equal to this form I mean x 1 up to x n r generators of r over k as a k algebra. They need not be algebraically independent here x 1 bar and x 2 bar are not algebraically independent. That is uh, one remark I wanted to make. Now, so how did we prove? 
we proved first of all if x1 up to xn are algebraically independent we are through we can just take r to be equal to n itself. Uh, okay, we do it by induction on n if n is 0 you can take r to be 0 suppose n is bigger than 0 if they are all algebraically independent we can take r to be equal to n and z i equal to x i and we are through. Suppose we have a polynomial which is satisfied by this we look at a homogeneous component of uh, I mean all the homogeneous components of the polynomial which is satisfied by this then we look at the leading homogeneous term that is the homogeneous term of highest degree. Now what we do is that we make coordinate changes so that this becomes a monic polynomial in one of the variables say x n. So, how do we do that given a homogeneous uh, polynomial we proved that lemma saying that there exists an n minus 1 tuple uh, such that f uh, I mean it does not vanish at that which is not a root of the given homogeneous polynomial. Okay. There we use the fact that the field is infinite for that part we need the field to be infinite otherwise we cannot really uh, say this. Okay. So, uh, so that, that uh, using the fact that it is infinite we convert the given polynomial into a monic polynomial and that gives me the I mean I just change the twist I mean, uh, tweak the generators and get uh, in a slightly new form y 1 up to y n such that they satisfy the same polynomial which is monic as a polynomial in y n. So, therefore, what we get is that y n is integral over k y 1 up to y n minus 1. Now, k y 1 up to y n minus 1 has only n minus 1 generators as a k algebra. Therefore, we can up, uh, we can uh, apply induction and say that there exists variable z 1 up to z r such that k z 1 up to z r injects into k y 1 up to y n minus 1 and the extension is finite. Now, k y 1 up to y n minus 1 to k y 1 up to y n it is again finite because it is integral y n is integral over k y 1 up to y n minus 1. Therefore, we have k z 1 up to z r to r is finite okay. that is how we proved the uh, Noether normalization lemma. So, uh, as a corollary to Noether normalization lemma uh, we prove Hilbert's null Stellens are null Stellens are in German. Uh, I mean, this is German word meaning theorem of zeros. So, there are uh, three forms we will be discussing three forms of null Stellens are. Uh, so, the first form is called weak form this says let r be a finitely generated k algebra which is a field if uh, uh, let r be yeah then k over r is a finite field extension
moreover if k is algebraically closed then k is equal to r. So, what this says is that if I have a finitely generated k algebra which is a field which is a field as well as finitely generated k algebra it has to be a finite field extension. Finite field extension means as a vector space over k see finitely generated c x 1 x 2 mod x 1 x 2 minus 1 this is. So, if I write this as c x 1 bar x 2 bar if this I mean this is a finitely generated c algebra, but this is not a finite extension c this is not a finite c module, because you have many more algebraically independent uh, elements here. See if I take x 1 x 1 square x 1 I mean images of 1 bar x 1 bar x 1 bar square Th these are all independent over C right. There is no polynomial that uh, this x 1 up to say x n I mean x 1 x 1 square this set satisfies over C not over x 1 x 2 or anything over C this is a linearly independent set. So, therefore, this is not a finite field extension I mean of course, this is not a field, but this is not a finite module I am saying. So, here <coughs> the situation is if R is a finitely generated k algebra which is a field then there are no other option I mean it has to be a uh, finite field extension. I mean the second part follows directly from here uh, if R is all if k is algebraically closed which means you cannot have any finite field extension of k which means k is equal to r. So, first let us uh, prove the prove this part. So, r is a finitely generated k algebra. Now, we we have this uh, null stellens r which says by now uh, I mean we have the noether normalization which says uh, there exists z 1 up to z r such that k z 1 up to z r is contained in r. Now, r is a field ok. So, I have k contained in k z 1 up to z r contained in r. Now, R is a field and this is what we indeed proved is that this is an integral extension. This is a finitely generated module over this one therefore, and this is a field therefore, this is also a field this we proved some time back and this what we indeed proved is that this is an integral extension right the proof of Noether normalization says that this is an integral extension. By induction we proved at each step you can get an integral extension. This is integral this is field therefore, this is a field. How can this be a field? The only way is r is 0 a polynomial ring k x this can never be a field unless I mean k x no this one k x 1 up to x n can never be a field unless n is 0. So, therefore, this implies that k z 1 up to z r is a field
what does that say? That says that r is 0, that says that k to r is finite. Okay. Now, if r is uh, sorry, if k is algebraically independent, uh, sorry, algebraically closed, then r is uh, then then k does not have does not have a proper uh, finite extension. And that implies that k is equal to r. It can have infinite extension. For example, C, the field C can, yeah, it is algebraically closed. You cannot have a finite extension of C, but you can still have like this, right? You attach a variable. This is an extension. Finite will imply algebraic. You cannot have any algebraic extension of C, right? You cannot have a algebraic extension of C. In particular, you can have you cannot have a finite extension of uh, C, but this is neither algebraic nor finite. So, similarly, what uh, here if C k is algebraically closed, R has to be equal to k. Another uh, very important form of null stellenza is uh, is the one which describes the maximal ideals of uh, polynomial rings over algebraically closed fields. So, look at uh, let us look at another form, this is another corollary. Uh, okay. uh, let k be algebraically closed. then the maximal ideals of uh, k x 1 up to x n are of the form x 1 minus a 1 up to You must have seen uh, uh, the one variable version of this in uh, say for C. If you look at the uh, if you look at the polynomial ring C x, maximal ideals are always of the form x minus alpha, alpha varies over. But now this theorem says that maximal ideals of this are precisely the maximal ideals uh, uh, precisely the element I mean ideals of this form. So, uh, let us prove this let i be a maximal ideal Uh, k x 1 up to x n. Okay. Then I have this map k injects into k x 1 up to x n modulo i. Okay. 
this is the map is a i mapping to a i bar. For any k algebra, k sits inside uh, the k algebra in this form, k is a field. So, this map is always injective, if it is non-zero it has to be injective, if i is a maximal ideal this map has to be non-zero, therefore it has to be injective. So, this k sits inside this in the natural manner, but now what we know is that i is a maximal ideal therefore, this is a finitely generated k algebra which is a field by the weak form of null stellenza it says that this is a finite extension of finite field extension of k. Since this uh, k x 1 up to x n mod i is a field by Hilbert's null Stellinza weak form. Uh, so, let me call this r, r is a finite field extension of k, but now k is algebraically closed which means k has to be r has to be equal to k. Since, k is algebraically closed, k has to be equal to r or you know this uh, k has to be I should uh, write k has to be isomorphic to r, k sits inside here that image has to be equal to r or in other words a i the map a i going to a i bar in to r is an isomorphism. That is what it says. Now, if I take, so I have this k x 1 x 2 up to x n uh, x 1 bar. So, I write this as k x 1 bar up to x n bar. Okay. So, let me call this map phi. Let a i be equal to phi inverse of x i bar. This is uniquely determined. Okay then what would be the so that says that the ideal i is precisely x1 minus a1 up to xn minus an because a1 see in this one uh, if a i denotes this x 1 minus a 1 has to be 0 in x 1 minus a 1 has to be 0 in r. Similarly, x i minus a i has to be 0 in r or in other words x 1 minus a 1 comma x n minus a n is contained in i, but this is a maximal ideal x 1 the ideal generated by x 1 minus a 1 up to x n minus a n is a maximal ideal. Therefore, they have to be equal. Let me this implies that x i bar minus a i bar is 0 in r which is k x 1 up to x n modulo i. That implies that x i minus a i is in i for all i from 1 to n that implies that the ideal generated by these elements this is contained in i. Now, this is a maximal ideal i is maximal 
<coughs> this is a maximal ideal. They are equal. That is precisely what we wanted to prove. Every maximal ideal is of this form. Now, the third form of uh, null Stellenza talks about how you know how closure of a variety looks like, or in other words, I'll uh, so given given a, a set x in uh, in a and k okay i can you know go to the polynomial ring by looking at i of x the ideal in k x 1 up to x n right now given an ideal i in the polynomial ring I can look at all the common zeros of i, v of i, v of i is set of all a 1 up to a n in k n, in fact a n k you can say such that f of a 1 up to a n is 0 for all f in i all the common zeros. So, if I start with an algebraic set I can get an ideal and then come back here ok I go back to this one I again land up with a set here. I start with an uh, ideal here I come to this one to get a set in a and k and then go back to get an ideal here. What are the relations between these two? So, if I start with let us start with an uh, element x, x in a and k okay, and then get an ideal i x and then go to v of i of x. Can we say some relation between them? x is contained in v of i of x. Can we say that these two are equal? Okay. So, let us uh, let us look at the other one I start with an ideal i in k x 1 up to x n I have v of i which is a variety in a and k and then I get back to i of v of i uh, sorry k x 1 up to x n. Let us let us start with a simple example here. Okay. Suppose I take x, uh, suppose I take the ideal x square. Okay. What is so x square in k x? What is the 0 set here? all elements which vanish on all elements of ideal. What would be v of i? Zero only, right? V i will be zero only. That is the only element which will vanish on every element of this. Now, what if I go back i of 0. I am looking at now I am looking at all the polynomials in forget about this what we started with. Now, I, I have this set I am looking at all polynomials in k x which vanish on 0. 
ha huh, which is the ideal generated by x so what is the relation between these two this ideal is contained here and what is the exact relation between these two ideals can you give me a precise relation between these two ideals ideal generated by x square and ideal generated by x yeah or in other words radical of this is this and that's precisely what the uh, hilbert snell stellenza says that you start with an ideal form variety and then take the ideal of that variety what you get is nothing but the radical of the ideal that we started with okay we first prove a uh, a uh, slightly more general form let r be a finitely generated k algebra then for an ideal i radical of i so we have already uh, seen the definition of radical it is the you know all elements with some power of the element contained in i we then proved that it is nothing but intersection of all prime ideals containing i but now in this specific situation that uh, ideal i is contained in a finitely generated k algebra radical of i is nothing but set of all maximal ideals containing i okay so in this one one inclusion is clear right this is contained here right clearly radical of i is contained in the right hand side now what we need to show is that if there is an element which is not here i want to say that there exists a maximal ideal that misses that uh, element okay so let f be not in radical of i that means f power n does not belong to i for all n or in other words if i take i look at this set f power n n from 0 1 2 and so on then s intersection i is empty so consider the ring s inverse p ah uh, oh well ah uh, yeah uh, maximal in s inverse r okay i look at the ring s inverse p uh, uh sorry consider the ideal uh s inverse p maximal ideal in uh, s inverse r okay and and p is prime and see the uh, correspondence between prime ideals of uh, s inverse r and r we already know that you know they are all prime ideals that do not intersect with uh, s so uh, so therefore this is a prime ideal where p 
it is a prime ideal in R. Now, I claim that P is indeed maximal in R. Suppose I prove that P is maximal in R, okay. that would say that F cannot be in P naturally, because F is in S, this F, this is in S. If I say that P is maximal in R, S inverse S inverse P is maximal ideal. Okay, if P is maximal in R, I have obtained a maximal ideal which do not contain F, and that's exactly what we want, right? So I claim P is a maximal ideal in R. Now, how do I do this? Okay. I have, uh, so I, I basically want to show that R mod P is a field. Okay. Now, look at this R mod P, see this is certainly an integral domain. So, I, so I have an integral, uh, sorry, I have an injection from here to S inverse R mod S inverse P, right. R mod P injects into S inverse R mod S inverse P because R mod I and mean, this is an integral domain. So, therefore, I have this extension. Now, this is a field. Uh, yeah, so this is a field. Uh, yeah, K. Uh, yes. See again, you know the trick goes back to the uh, uh, to say that uh, this is uh, yeah, this is a uh, finite field extension. Okay, so this is yeah. See this extension is finite. Now this extension is also finite. Why is this finite? If I look at uh, the generators of R, if R is generated by let us say uh, A1 over k as k algebra, then that S inverse. So, what we know is that R is a finitely generated k algebra, right. Huh, so, this is a finitely generated k algebra. I want to say, sorry. Uh, then S inverse R mod S inverse P is a finitely generated K algebra as well, generated by A 1 up to A n and 1 by F. So, therefore, this is a finitely generated K algebra, which is a field. Therefore, by uh, uh, null still in the weak form, this is a finite extension. Okay. That means, this is a finite extension now 
R mod P is an integral domain, you have a, this is a field that says R mod P is a field. Therefore, so this is R mod P is a field that implies P is maximum. This is a finitely generated K algebra, okay, which is a field. Therefore, this is a which one? This is a why is it a finitely generated K algebra? That is exactly what I am what I have written. If so, our assumption is that R is a finitely generated K algebra, okay. So, if R is K, suppose it, I write this like this. Then, in fact, S inverse R itself, S inverse R would be nothing but K A1 up to A n 1 by F. It should be A1 bar A n. Huh, so, here it is A1 bar up to. So, S inverse R itself is a finitely generated K algebra. And here we are looking at S inverse R mod S inverse P. Okay. So, this is a finitely generated K algebra which is a, a S inverse, this is a finitely generated K algebra which is a field, this is finite extension, this is finite extension, this is field, therefore, this is field. Okay. That means, P is a field, uh, sorry P is maximal ideal and that is exactly and now that implies P is a maximal ideal with F not in P because S inverse P is a maximal ideal, F cannot be in P. So, that proves that radical I is intersection of maximal ideals. So, another corollary is uh, let I be an ideal in K x 1 up to x n k algebraically closed then i of v of i is equal to radical of i this is in fact we don't require i to be algebraically closed one can prove this for any infinite field and uh, in that case there is a uh, I mean there are you know if you just search Google there are you know uh, a lot of proofs different proofs using different techniques uh, for this one. Uh, but there is a, a nice proof using Rabinovich trick which I will you know uh, leave it to you to check. Uh, uh, read on your own, uh, but I'll you know write it as a corollary of this uh, uh, the earlier result. So suppose let F be in uh, a radical of I. That implies that F power n is uh, is in I for some n, okay. That means F power n. Uh, so uh, I'll write this point as or okay. F power n a is zero for every a in V of I. 
by definition it is an element in i. What is the definition of v of i? v of i those elements in i uh, those elements in uh, in k n those points in k n uh, sorry uh, yeah f is in this means this is 0 for every a in v of i and that directly implies that f power n Uh, no. Huh. So this no no oh, okay. So this says that f power n of a is zero implies that f of a has to be zero because it's you know f power n of a is nothing but f of a whole power n. Right. That means f f of a is zero for every a in v of i and that implies that f belongs to i of v of i. So, now let f be not in radical of i. If f is not in the radical of i that means by earlier previous proposition there exists a maximal ideal x1 minus a1 up to xn minus an such that f is not in so let me f is not in m what does that mean see i want to say that f is not in the uh, i of v of i this one maximal ideals containing i it has to be so so here uh, there exists a maximal ideal m containing i containing i such that f is not in m ok. Now, see m is contained in i implies that a 1 up to a n is in v of i right this point has to be in v of i because every element is see every element in m is a polynomial combination of this. So, if you put x 1 up to x n equal to 0 that has to be 0 therefore, this is a 1 up to n is in v of i but now I want to say that i of f is not in i of v of y. Huh, yeah, oh, of course, yes. Uh, yeah, this is c and <coughs> this is not in m implies that f of a 1 up to a n is non zero. Right, because f is in I mean this is characterization f is in m if and only if f of a 1 up to a n is 0 for every I mean, uh, a 1 up to a n is 0. So, f is not in m implies f of a 1 up to a n is non 0 a 1 up to a n is here and f of a 1 up to a n is non 0 implies that f is not in i of v of i. So, that implies radical of i is equal to ok. So, that finishes the 
proof for null Stellinza. So, there is a uh, weak form, uh, uh, there is a another proof if uh, if k is infinite need not necessarily be algebraically closed, then there is a proof using uh, what is called Rabinovich trick. You can search for this in uh, you know uh, or this proof is given in uh, uh, in undergraduate commutative algebra by uh, Miles Reed. Okay. Uh, I would uh, like you to go through the proof. So, we stop here.